So what's going on guys, DIY Dan, Saltwater Junkie here again, and today I'm going to be building a denitrator coil uh, for this 125 eel slash coral tank that I've got. Uh, my nitrates are still pushing 25 to 30, and I can't seem to get them down any lower than that, so I'm hoping this is going to help out. I have built a couple of these in the past, didn't really have much success with them, but I am doing a design change and I'm hoping it's going to work out well. So here's a glimpse of the finished product guys. Now this housing I believe was a restaurant size RO membrane housing. Uh, I got it when I bought a used aquarium off of Craigslist it came as part of the filtration system. But you can build one of these out of PVC and I have a video showing me doing that on another denitrator coil that I built so you can check that out. And now we will go over the theory of operation of these. The water enters through the top of the coil works its way down your coil. As it's working its way down through the tubing, the oxygen is being depleted in the water, okay? When it gets to the bottom of the coil, hopefully you have very little or no oxygen left in the water because the bacteria that eliminate nitrates need a no oxygen environment to thrive. So then when you put your media in the chamber, you want a large surface area for that bacteria to thrive on. As that water comes back through that media, eliminating the nitrates as it goes up and then exits through the top in a slow drip back to your tank or sump. Okay, so that's the concept of this. So here's a quick view of the two previous denitrators that I had made, guys. Uh, now, I had each of these running on a system for three or four months, give or take, and I never saw a reduction in nitrates from the inlet to the outlet side of these. However, one of the main reasons I think that was is because I was restricting the inlet to reduce my flow instead of restricting the outlet. So I was never building any pressure in these, which I think is a big reason why they were not working. Uh, so we're gonna do that differently, obviously. These are both built the same way. I did coil these on the inside and uh, I used bio balls on both of these so we are changing that up a little bit as well. So let's get to the new build. I'm using tape to hold it as I go because this is a little tedious. And then I'm just wrapping it. And then adding a little bit of tape every once in a while to hold it. So that was a lot of work to coil that up. So what I'm gonna do is put an extra hose clamp just to hold that tubing tight right at the top here. So I've got it taped below. In case this doesn't go well, I don't lose the whole coil uh, loosening up. I'm gonna take this tape off, move this clamp up and clamp it down and then I'll take this tape off. So to protect the tubing from the hose clamp where it tightens down at, I stole one of the rubbers off of this style clamp that I had and put it underneath the hose clamp. Uh, that was 150 foot of tubing and that was a four inch diameter uh, tube and it was about two foot worth of tubing that I coil wrapped there. I've only got about 50 feet left I would guess so that took about 100 foot of tubing to do that. So when you're doing plumbing tape, if you put it in your hand like this right here, this is my right hand, have the threads facing you, set it on there, and then wrap it around. You can go really fast, threads it really good, and then you can use, you can snap, you can snap it off like that, which makes it a heck of a lot easier. So I've got a Y valve on my cold water supply for my washing machine in the laundry room and I've teed off of that and I'm running a quarter inch PEX line. I plan on putting a reverse osmosis in here. Uh, I just haven't got around to it yet, but 
but for now I'm just flushing through my denitrator uh, just to get any other materials and stuff uh, out of here. So I'm going to do that. I'll probably fill this whole five gallon bucket up for now and then we'll go ahead and hook it up to the system. So I'm going to go over how I plumbed mine in real quick. Uh, the finished product came out looking really nice. Hopefully it works as well as it looks. Uh, now this is my main display return from my pump. I had some extra ball valves up here, so I'm using that for my supply. Okay, coming into the top of the coil, working its way down, entering the bottom of the chamber, coming back up through the media, through my ball valve to control the flow, and back out, and I returned it to my protein skimmer section. Now you want a very steady but slow drip coming out of the return. Okay, and if you ever get a little bit of a rotten egg smell, that means you're not flowing enough water, so you need to up your flow a little bit if you ever start to get that smell out of the, out of the drain, okay? I built another one for my 210 gallon display, and I'm going to be comparing those because that one's got bio balls in it. This one has the loofahs and the sponges. Uh, they got installed a week apart, so they're not going to be very far apart from each other as far as the time to build up the uh, bacteria. So that should be a good test. So I will be doing updates comparing this one and the one I have on my 210. Now bear in mind that it's gonna take probably a month to a month and a half just for the bacteria that eliminates the nitrates to start building up in this pressure vessel. So it might be a couple months before I do the updates, but I will let you know whether I get any nitrate removal out of this. All right, hope you guys enjoyed this video. Hope to see you on the next one. Have a good one. Later.